Hi, I'm Don. And hi, I'm Cindy. Welcome to Pearls of Liberty, August 11th, 2012. Uh, we both typically listen to Alex Jones, and yesterday he had a guest who was talking about mortgage fraud. Um, and it, Alex used the phrase patriot myths, and we have looked into some of what Alex is calling patriot myths, and we, we both just kind of wanted to share a little bit uh, of what we've been thinking about, what, what Alex referred to as patriot myths, um, using UCC code and various organizations restore America. And, um, we're not sure they're all myths, but we, but we do want to um, just examine them to some extent. And many of us have been lied to for so long that now that we're, we've, we've come to accept a measure of truth... We didn't know we were lied when we were being lied to. No, no, not at all. Um, so it, it's, we kind of have to go through a process now, I think all of us, in learning how to sort through what we're being told to be able to recognize truth. And because we've been lied to, I think sometimes truth it tends to elude us. And people who want to continue to mislead us through psyops and uh, interlopers, people who, who come into groups intentionally to mislead, can do that because we have that vulnerability of, for a very long time, uh, having believed many lies that were told to us. Well, yeah. Um, the, the, specifically, as far as uh, Alex talking about patron of the myths, I wish he had gotten more specific because there, there are some things that we wonder about and we still wonder about. For instance, specifically on the topic of mortgage fraud, I would like to know if Alex or any of his guests, if I had been able to call in, I would have said, hey, what about um, land patents? Is that a patriot myth? And that's something that's on the emerging edge of some of the stuff in RUSA, and people seem to be getting into it in, in the preliminary stages, seem to be successful. But there's no doubt that the enemy who has planned a decades if not longer conspiracy knows where the exits to their enslavement system are and has planned for people trying to use those exits and then entrapping them once they do and one of the people that we admire that was a leader in Rusa, Ken Cousins, has uh, elaborated on that fact. You can find out more from him or from Pantera, that organization that we're a part of. Well, so. These are they're, they're traps within new governments or quasi-governments that are emerging, like Rusa and Tusa, the United States of America. And we, we look into these things, and there's a period at which you're enamored at first. You go, wow, this is it, this is the solution. And then the disillusionment sets in, not only because they're people and people are imperfect, but because you begin to see some serious cracks in the foundation and you wonder, can this really survive and, and is this intentional? Is this meant to siphon off our energy? So more and more I find myself in agreement with principles of what I'll call biblical anarchy. And I say biblical anarchy because well, we're Christians and we don't believe in lawlessness. But it does clearly show us in the scripture that the, during the time of Samuel, when the people ask for a king, that God said through Samuel, clearly told Samuel, they're doing an evil thing. In other words, what we got going here now is better when we had judges that were raised up personally by God to judici judiciate the, in the affairs of the people. So more and more I'm seeing government is not the solution, and I thought at first that maybe Tusa could be a protection against government, kind of an anti-government government, but, um, and I'm not completely um, saying that, that there not, might not be an answer there because some of the systematic things look very good, but there are, there's flaws that, that I see that have to do with 
monopolies of power in, in spite of the, the claims of powerlessness. So uh, the judiciary in the hands of the, the, uh, the same group that allows the entrance, the, the postmaster council, and controls the gateway um, the, is a, definitely looking to um, top down authoritarian to me. And uh, they claim to be not. So, so you go to your states and you do your thing, but who controls the gateway anyway? That's my two cents on that. Um, just got done with, or um, finishing up a discussion on the right to life within the, uh, the, that government or the allowance for it. And one of the things, and I'm assuming that a lot of people, or at least some of the people that listen to this are Christians, for me that's foundational, right to life. But what, what's the case, that what you have out there is a lot of people who are reactive against the right to life. They think, you're interfering with my body. You're trying to tell me how to live my life. But all I really want to do is be a part of a society that protects the uh, unborn and those least able to defend themselves and capable of defending themselves. That right to life is foundational in the Declaration of Independence. And I can't think of anything more foundational to build a society on. So. If you don't want to have laws about that one way or the other, that's okay, but don't tell me that you can't have laws that would make abortion illegal. So that's that's my stand there, and I'm finding surprising resistance to that. So there, I went off the subject of patriot mythology, but the whole idea is, are there groups out there that may not really work in the long run because, and this leads into the next topic that's only introduced, maybe God is not wanting there to be a government-like solution at this point. Well, it's it's really just a, a, a one passage in the Bible that I was in my mind for some reason. I'm not saying that it's a prophecy or anything. It was I just woke up thinking about it, um, and I believe that somehow it relates to uh, Americans and our struggle for. Uh, a return to a culture that has liberty and justice for all. And the passage is when, after, after the Apostle Paul had been arrested and he was uh, being transported to Rome, a part of his journey was by ship. And he knew prophetically that there was going to be a shipwreck if they embarked on a certain portion of this journey. And he urged them not to embark, to wait until a better season. But they went anyway, and the ship was in a very grave danger. And God spoke to Paul and said, uh, there won't be any loss of life, but you must all stay on the ship. And uh, they even cut away some of the lifeboats. So what do you think the lifeboats might be? Well, we're thinking that maybe the lifeboats might look like other systems that you can get in and that would take you safely to away from this hazard of this thing that you're in that's being dashed against the rocks. So in that analogy, maybe things like Rus and Tusa are the, look like they're the lifeboats, but God is saying, hey, at least in our case anyway, we're more and more thinking this is not the lifeboat that we are supposed to get into and we're questioning whether those lifeboats will even work at all and if they're allow, being allowed to uh, have people, to take people to safety. And we're open to considering leaving the country and going somewhere that seems safer, maybe for a period of time until things calm down, but we're, we're think, wondering if God maybe really has, is asking um, Christians who are aware of what's going on in the government to hang together, to tough it out, and, uh, you know, just the idea of all of us coming through together. Um, that is, that can be something of a, a biblical principle and a principle of people who are living together in community. So, we'll see on that. Uh, another Another thing that I would, I'm just wondering about this as a patriot myth. Um, Don and I both love words. We, we are both writers. We, uh, we very much appreciate communication that is effective, that uh, lets people know 
you know, what you really intend to let them know. But also, you know, uh, systems of witchcraft, uh, magic, dark magic can be built on words. And this, I've wondered at times about this idea that uh, if we craft the perfect letter to the IRS, or we craft the perfect legal document that says our mortgage is invalid, you know, whatever. Um, th this is almost, to, in my mind, almost on the verge of, uh, of a, a magic kind of an effort to control through words. And um, in the Christian faith, it's not words that are as significant, the words are significant, but what is significant is power. Our legal system has, well everybody's familiar with the phrase legalese, it's, it's a different language and it's become disconnected from the heart. And our desire is to turn, return to a more common law-like legal system where people are able to judge from their heart and they're less looking at the letter of the law, but more the intent of the law and the protection of, of innocence and the things that the law was intended to do. The whole idea of jury nullification is something that I'm very much for. You can say, this is a stupid law, uh, we're going to hold the, the defendant innocent because there's no point in any of this. That is something that the founders envisioned was entirely possible in, in within the realm of correct government. So the, the whole idea of words as magic is, is part of the enslavement system and the, the way out, the freedom, is to find some way to exercise common sense in the midst of all of this and that's a struggle. I, I, don't, I won't dwell on this for a long time, but just the, the idea of power and words being in balance, I, I believe it's tied to some extent to all of us staying together because you know there's strength in numbers that's an old uh, adage that we've all heard um, there's a power that comes from a group of people agreeing together and uh, what, what the Bible says is just 1 Corinthians 4.20 um, for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power and if you go on Bible Gateway or do some kind of a Bible search and just look for those two words, uh, word or words, power, the returns are really interesting. There are many, many verses that I could have cited, but Don always asks people to do homework, so that can, that can be some homework. Any idea of power or any any exercise of real power that we have ultimately comes from God because we're creatures that are created to be in fellowship with Him so that the real power doesn't come from numbers, it comes from alignment with God and that's one of the reasons why the Bible is such a wonderful book because over and over again you have minorities or single individuals that are taking a strong moral stand and moral in the sense that not self-righteousness, but just alignment with principles of God and with life and protection of innocence and, and standing against the oppressor over and over again. That's real power. So we have an opportunity to step into that power because the more abuse you see, the more victimization you see, the more um, deception you see, the greater the opportunity to align yourself with God in opposition. Awesome. That is just such a great thought. And we, uh, we've we been thinking a little bit this week about what is characterized as fear porn. And I, I think that we've mentioned it uh, before in our videos. Um, many people think of Alex Jones as being kind of a fear porn guy. We happen not to, and I think Don will comment on that a little more. Um, but this has come up in my life. Um, mostly in reference to uh, false flag terror that, you know, people want me to watch horrifying videos or a friend of ours uh, believes that, that uh, there's going to be a major earthquake in either Australia or California with a huge tsunami in the next, I don't know, it was five days on Thursday, so now I guess we have another two or three days to go. But uh, it, it's it's... It is, uh, it becomes a distraction, and we're joking about the old 
Seinfeld quote um, about cleavage, a poke and a peek. You know, with false flag terror, we we do we have to poke each other and say, hey, this could happen. But then you know we peek at it. We don't go out and watch every single video we can find about it and make it a central theme. That really just feeds fear. Well, yeah, the, the accusation from people that are anti-conspiracy theorists say, well, you're just finding a conspiracy in everything. But the truth is, is that once you have educated yourself in the history of this stuff, you realize how predominant it is, and you're aware of what it is when it passes in front of you. That doesn't mean that you're constantly looking to find it. It just means you recognize it when you see it. And unfortunately, we live in a time where the government is doing these things that in order to manipulate public opinion. There really are people that are under mind control or under uh, drug-induced uh, enslavement programs or whatever it is. Um, the, both of the recent mass shootings, the, the theater in Aurora, Colorado, and then the, the other one before it and the Jer Jerry Lee Lawson one before that, they were all, they all had strong indications that they were individuals under government mind control. Um, and when I say government, I don't mean to endorse it in any way. I, it, it's really more the lawless military industrial complex that has gotten way out of control that has these capabilities. So if you don't think that this kind of thing is possible, that just you just need to educate yourself, look into it, and become aware of history and then you see it when it comes up and if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it probably is a duck and it doesn't mean you're always looking for ducks everywhere, it just means you recognize a duck. Interestingly enough, and we, we never mentioned this on video, but um, and we, we don't want to get into Drake, it, it's not in our notes, this is not in our notes, but um, it, it was interesting that Don pointed out to me once that uh, Drake uh, is the name obviously the, the term for a male duck and um, another term for a male duck is a canard and a canard is a word for a lie and actually I think the literal uh, origin origin of the word canard and I think it was French and it means to quack. We're, we're kind of uh, less than 50-50 on Drake at this point you know, more on the, the negative side, but that doesn't mean that we've completely ruled out that, that he might be actually the real thing. It's, it's looking like more of a managed opposition kind of a thing at this point. And uh, that kind of leads into what we're going to talk about next, about where where is our hope in terms of uh, the cabal being exposed, etc. We've got, like anybody else, some disillusionment that there hasn't been the change that we thought would have happened by now, both in terms of the banking system and in terms of any political movements that have any real force for change. Ron Paul kind of petering out. The convention remains to be seen, what impact he's going to have, but it's, uh, we're not getting our hopes up. So there's some disappointment there. Um, but we still think things will change. The change is inevitable, but it's uh, it's just taking longer than we thought. And things like Paul Ryan being uh, Romney's VP pick, designated VP, I guess there's been an official announcement, it's floated everywhere. And, and a lot of the people that consider themselves conservative Republicans are really, really, really liking him, really liking the idea, but what well, we don't or I don't, and, and I'll tell you why, it's not that he's terrible because there's a lot of good things about him, but um, it, his, his choice line it just exacerbates this left-right uh, paradigm that is the enslavement system, and it, uh, he polarizes, and the polarization is on purpose. And Obama came in claiming that he was going to be anti-polarizing, and of course he's very polarizing. So it's somebody. It doesn't mean that you need to take soft positions or be wishy-washy to be non-polarizing. It means you need to break out of this division of false left versus right. And Ron Paul does that brilliantly, which is one of the major reasons why we're we're supporters of him. But ultimately, liberty unites people, as as Dr. Paul points out. So. 
Paul Ryan um, having got to point out that he voted for the NDAA, he voted the, the indefinite detention of American citizens, he, without due process, voted for the Patriot Act, uh, and he wants it to be permanent, etc. So he buys into all of the Orwellian police state system things and doesn't go to the root, doesn't see the root problem with the Federal Reserve and the whole monetary system with the deck stacked for the bankers against the American people and, and the, the global enslavement system, all of that. He's blind to all of that. So it takes, to, to focus on him as a hope gets your eyes off of the real problem and gets you into this false reality that we really want to break out of. Yes, we do want to break out of it, and um, one another Benjamin Fulford had actually talked about. Uh, I think Don mentioned he he said that there would probably be change this fall because if there will be regime changes in a, in a few different countries, and um, he stated that. Uh, the left and right uh, in their paradigm in this country are going to be battling it out. And that's one thing that can be confusing to some people about the Illuminati. Well, aren't they, don't they all have the same agenda, the same plan? Aren't they all on the same page? Well, yes, but they believe so strongly in survival of the fittest that they uh, establish surround situations in which they are forced to fight one another for dominance. And Benjamin Fulford also stated that he thought it was possible that we might have revolution in the U.S., but we don't, you know, we're in touch with people and we certainly don't, don't hear anything serious about that outside of uh, what Drake says and sometimes maybe what Tim Turner says, but who knows, if, if there are mass arrests, we will be good people as we were asked and stay in our house and, uh, <laughs> and let's call them on. Um, but failing that, which probably will fail, uh, the elections will be this false battle between left and right. And Don has some really insightful thoughts about this, this paradigm of one battling against another. Yeah, I want to lead into that to, by by saying that what I expect to happen, or just my expectation this fall, doesn't mean it's it can't change tomorrow. But I will be surprised if Romney beats Obama. I think we're looking at another four years of Obama. Of Obama. I think that the powers that be have been holding off change until they can get him in again for a sure thing, because he's proven to be a man that can be counted on to advance the New World Order agenda in a very uh, covert way. He's he's kept a lot of people asleep. A lot of people are waking up, but they. I think the the powers that be, the New World Order, shadow government people, think that they're going to lose traction if they have to change horses at this point. So I expect Obama to get in there again. And I hear what Joe Farah is saying about that real journalists could be in danger for their very lives. Yeah, that's a very real possibility. But I believe this is kind of a best of times, worst of times scenario. The, the, the people that are on the side of liberty globally, we're talking about BRICS, economic nations, um, the people that want to promote a global system of, uh, of integrity and in banking and get the dark cabal out of banking and enslavement power, then I believe that they're they're probably going to make their move at that point. And we should not be disillusioned and pre think that that's not going to happen when Obama gets in. So the, the chessboard is being set up, and it takes two sides to set up the chessboard. And what really is um, at at issue here is what define what defines black and white what defines the squares and if you've if you know about Hegelian dialectic problem reaction solution you know that it's all a setup in order to gain energy 
And energy is movement from black to white. It's the positive and negative. It's the yin and the yang. And this is the, the principle of mobilizing the masses that the elites have known for generations and generations get passed on. Well, what they do in these times of flux is they redefine what black and white is. They redefine what those chessboard, not so much the pieces, but where the energy flows from what to what. And the, that's, what's, that's what's happening at this stage. So the, the old guard is trying to keep the definitions within the left versus right paradigm. The old, I mean, the, the, the new or emerging or liberty culture wants to engage people into a liberty versus tyranny paradigm, and the energy will flow from one to the other based on who holds the predominant, what the predominant worldview is. And so this is really a battle for the hearts and minds. This is really more about the individual human will than any of us would guess. This is why I'm less and less a fan of government systems and more a fan of the human heart. That's where God works. And right now, he's raising us up to a level where we can see that the real paradigm is between liberty and tyranny and that they, that will create the flow which will go towards liberty if people are aware of it. If they get deceived by the false paradigm of left versus right, they're going to be sucked into a tyranny of a might versus right kind of a thing. Yeah, I want to enforce what I believe is right because I'm on God's side. That's going to lead to our destruction. So hopefully make that makes some sense and put it Cindy put a note down here, Fifth Element, Love. And we just recently rewatched the movie The Fifth Element and really that's what it's all about. It's all about being empowered by love because love will seek to empower others not to enslave others and that's what we're looking at unfolding down the road so open up your eyes not only to see the good in, in, in each other because that is empowering but also don't be deceived that there really is evil among us and there really is deception you have to be awake to that to be able to rise to the higher level and rise above those deceptions that are designed to enslave. I, I personally am helped by that and by that insight that Don has uh, said some things that I had not really thought through uh, before. Um, one thing that he said when we were discussing this earlier is that the, the chessboard has been set up by the social engineers to create a fear current rather than a yeah, life yeah. current and that we um, we need the life current. I thought it was interesting yesterday uh, Ken Cousins was on Morning Liberty and one of the things that he said just kind of almost in passing is that um, evil is live spelled backward. <laughs> yeah. So there's that tension and that that's kind of the, that that is uh, that feeling is in the movie The Fifth Element too that that tension between evil which tries to destroy life um, and life which you know we have the impulse to go on and live and uh, love. So go in peace. Think for yourself. Rise higher and see with the vision of what's good for all. Be blessed.